Hi everyone. In today's sales level up, we're talking about auto provisioning users. So when customers ask about auto provisioning users, they're looking for an automated way to create user accounts in GitLab to save them from manual administrative overhead. They're also looking for some security aspects in terms of making sure the right people get access to GitLab and when they're no longer with the company, they get removed or blocked from using GitLab. GitLab user accounts can be managed in a variety of different ways from manual creation to automatic creation via a couple of different solutions that we'll talk about in the next slide. There are also APIs available, so users of uh, self, uh, admins of self-managed GitLab can create a script to manage user accounts if they choose to do so. What keywords are you likely to hear from your customer? They might talk about create user accounts and user management. They might talk about Active Directory or LDAP integration or SAML SSO. They may ask about OAuth and they may ask about SKIM. Let's dive into what these words mean. So first of all, how do you auto provision user accounts for self-managed GitLab? The solution is going to be different from gitlab.com. So we'll go through self-managed first. For self-managed instances, typically a customer will have an LDAP directory server already established within the organization, and that is used to help them define groups of users by role, department, or other grouping mechanisms in order to manage access to different applications that that organization uses. With the LDAP integration to GitLab, uh, we will be able to allow that user to log into GitLab with their LDAP username and password. And also, if a user is deleted from the LDAP server, they're going to get, be blocked from logging into GitLab. We do support a variety of different LDAP directory servers, including Microsoft Active Directory, Apple Open Directory, and several others as well. If we are talking about provisioning users on GitLab.com, auto provisioning is going to happen via the SAML SSO integration and the additional SKIM integration that's part of SAML SSO to be able to automatically create and de deactivate users. So SSO means single sign-on. Think about how we use Okta internally to be able to log in to a variety of different applications and web pages and everything um, using one single username and password. Um, that's what SSO means. And, and don't worry about SAML too much. SAML is just a common security protocol um, for the identity providers that are providing SSO capabilities. Now, SKIM is the secret sauce here when it comes to user provisioning. Um, SKIM is an additional feature of SSO that allows for the creation and deactivation of users. And SKIM is available via two SSO providers today, Azure and Okta. So if your customer or prospect is using one of those two identity providers, they can use SSO with SKIM to automatically create and deactivate user accounts on a, um, for a GitLab.com group. Now there are a couple of gotchas. So first of all, while the LDAP integration for auto provisioning of users works for every self-managed GitLab tier, different tiers have different feature sets for the integration. So keep that in mind if you're diving deeper into the LDAP integration. Also, keep in mind that the SAML SSO with SKIM is only available for GitLab.com users using the silver tier of GitLab or higher. And finally, there are a lot of organizations that use SAML SSO via other identity providers, not Azure, not Okta, and SKIM is not typically supported for those other identity providers. Here are some additional resources you can review if you have additional questions about how to configure SSO with SKIM and or set up an LDAP integration. Let's wrap it up. So auto provisioning of users means we can automatically create and deactivate user accounts on GitLab.com using the silver tier or higher. Customers can use SSO with SKIM integration for Azure or Okta. On self-managed GitLab, they're going to want to use the LDAP integration instead for auto-provisioning of users. 
And finally, as an alternative, there are APIs available for our self-managed GitLab users to be able to um, manage users uh, through their own custom scripting. Thank you for your time.